I'd like to welcome each one of you to our devotional study today. We are coming to the last end of 1 Timothy chapter 3. And uh, as we have looked at 1 Timothy chapter 3, we've seen in the first 13 verses the church and its officers. And we've seen there the qualifications for uh, church officers. So whenever we think of a pastor or deacon and, and we're looking for one of those, one of the things that we need to do whenever we're considering a person is we need to go into 1 Timothy chapter 3 and also what the Bible says in Titus. And we need to ask ourselves the question, biblically, does this person meet the qualifications that the scriptures reveal to us? And if that is not the case, then that's the end of the story. You don't need to go any further with that person. They don't meet the qualifications that God has laid out, and that's all there is to that. Also keep in mind as we look at these qualifications that you can't just look at them and say, well, I never planned to be a pastor or a deacon, so I don't have to worry about these qualifications. No, no, friends. There's nothing super spiritual about any of the qualifications that God has given as far as pastor or deacons are concerned. It's really just part of the normal Christian life, and we all should be striving for those things in our lives. But now we've moved past the, the uh, officers of the church, and we're looking at the church and her Lord in verses 14 through 16. So let's read those verses today. It says, says, These things write I unto thee, hoping to come unto thee shortly. But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou hoggest to behave thyself in the church, in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh justified in the spirit, seeing of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. So we are reminded here, first of all, in verse 14, that Paul tells us that he is writing those things to them, the things that he has written, but he is hoping that he comes, he's able to come to them shortly. These are a people that are near and dear to the heart of the Apostle Paul. He loves these people. He desires what is best for these people. He wants them uh, as a church to function the way that God wants a church to function. So he's told them these things. But then he says to them, listen, he says, if I tarry long, he says, I'm hoping to come to you shortly. But if there's a delay in my coming, one of the reasons I've written these things is so that you would know how you ought to behave yourself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. And so we see as we come into these verses that right behavior in the church is important. And let me remind you that a church is a divine institution. It's not started by man. It is started by God. Uh, man is not the one who makes the rules for how a church should function. It is God that is giving us those rules in, in the scripture. Man is not the one who needs to try to determine what the mandate of a church is. God has given us what the mandate of a church is in the word of God. All we need to do is be obedient to him. It really is not complicated. The church is a divine institution and right behavior in that church is important for a number of reasons. First of all, it is important because it is the house of God. Verse 15 says, But if I tarry long that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God. And as I was thinking about being the house of God, it's not our house and it's not our church. It's his house and it's his church. And as I was thinking about a house, you know, um, sometimes you're involved in going to other people's house. I can remember when our children were little, one of the things that we emphasized it to them is this, is that when they were in somebody else's house, that it was their house, that they were the ones who made the rules for that house and things of that nature. And we need to remember the same thing when it comes to the church. It's, it is the house of God. God is the one who makes the rules for the house. God is the one who says, this is what's going to happen and this shouldn't be happening. And we're just to be sensitive to him. But the church is a household or it's a family and it must be fed. A, a church, and, and this is one of the things that people forget today, a church does not grow by addition. It grows by nutrition. It grows by hearing the word of God. And if the word of God is not preached, and if we're not doing what the word of God tells us to do, then really, is it a church or is it just a social organization? So we need to understand the importance of nutrition in the church. Acts chapter 20, I'll give you several verses here. Acts chapter 20 and verse 28, Paul says, 
Take heed to yourself. Let me back up to verse 26. Wherefore, I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. How could he say that? He says, I can say that for this reason. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. He said, listen, I did not hold back in proclaiming to you the word of God. Then notice this. It says in verse 28, take heed unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. So there we see the mandate of a pastor is to feed the church of God. And the thing that we feed the church of God with is exactly what Paul mentioned in verse 27. It's the whole counsel of God. It is the whole word of God. Let me remind you what Jesus said when he was tempted in Matthew chapter 4 and in verse 4. It says, but he answered and said, it is written, men shall not live by bread alone, but by, notice this, every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. When it comes to feeding a church, a pastor cannot just pick, you know, like a potluck, pick what he wants and pick what people want to hear and, and give people what they want to hear because we're living in a day and age where many today have itching ears and and, but we can't just pick what they want to hear. We need to proclaim the whole counsel of God. That is what is needed in order for a church to be uh, fed, in order for a church to have the nutrition that it needs. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, as we think about this feeding in verses 1 and 2, it says, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, even as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hither... Two, you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. So he started out with the milk of the word of God, and he said that they they were not able to handle the meat of the word of God yet, which is a sad scenario. They were too carnal, they were too worldly, they were too shallow in their walk with God to truly be able to handle the meat of the word of God. You say, well, maybe it was because they were young in the faith. Well, sometimes that's the case, but not necessarily. Sometimes People as Christians, regardless of how long they've been saved, they never really grow up. They never really grow spiritually. And the writer of Hebrews dealt with that. And we're not going to take time to go into this passage, but let me just read it for you. In Hebrews chapter 5, verses 12 through 14, it says, For when for the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are such as become need of milk, and not of strong meat. So here's what he's saying. He's saying, you've been saved long enough that you ought to be eating T-bone steaks for the glory of God. But for whatever reason, you're not growing and you're still on the milk. And then he says in verse 13, for everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. He's never grown up. He's still a baby. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age. In other words, those who are mature. Even by though, even those who by reason of, notice this, circle this word, reason of use, have their senses, here's another good word to, um, to circle, have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. It's not just enough to know the word of God, but friends, we must use, we must practice, we must apply what it is that God says to us. And until we obey the light that God has given to us, do not be surprised if God does not give you more light. What he expects is for you to walk in the light that you've been given, and then he will increase the light that has been given to you. And then as we think about nutrition, Psalm 119 and verse 103 says this. It says, How sweet are thy words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey, to my mouth. So as we look at this today, and we'll continue it on looking at verses 15 and 16 tomorrow, but as we look at this today, we understand it's a house of God. God is the one who decides what happens. We're just there to do what it is that he wants done. But beyond that, what we really need to grow is we need nutrition. And I'm going to ask the church that you're a part of, how nutritional is it? Are you studying the whole word of God? Are you looking at the whole counsel of God and obeying what it is that God has to say to you? As an individual believer, what's your spiritual nutrition like? Are you taking in what you need to take in so that you can grow as a Christian? Or are you one of the people that by now 
should be eating T-bone steaks spiritually, but you're still on the milk because you've never grown up. You've never exercised those senses. You've never used what it is that God has taught you. Let me encourage you. Don't look at how old you are spiritually. Rather, ask yourself the question, how much have I grown spiritually? Even in this last month or so, how much have you grown spiritually? Tomorrow, we'll continue looking at right behavior in this divine institution that God has put here on earth for us. Have a great day.